Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the JBR Play Podcast. Tonight I am with, drumroll, Ben. The usual. And Hello. Ben, again. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, it's just us two tonight, guys. Um, and for tonight's topic, what we're going to talk to you about is, so before we have done a podcast on our childhood heroes, who our favourite heroes were as a kid, who were kind of our role models, and which characters we really loved, and then after that we actually spoke about villains. But we never actually discussed what makes a good hero, what we feel is the definition of a good, strong hero and a character who's relatable and likable. And yeah, the kind of the heroes that everyone knows and loves, what makes them so great? I kind of just said it really, didn't you? Yes. Relate- relatable? What's relatable? Relatable and likable. Yes, but there's qualities hmm. about them as well. For example, if we're going into this, so Superman is... Not relatable. One of the mill. He's not relatable. Not likable. <laughs> but he's... He can't, you know what I mean? He, he's, he's pure good. There is no, there's not one kind of, I know in, in certain comic issues, there are ones where he goes a bit, ooh, is he going evil? And like, if you um, play the Injustice game or read the Injustice comics, yes, there, he kind of becomes a bit of a dictator by bit. Majorly. Well, I mean, yeah, um, he, he doesn't really have much of a conflict, does he? Whereas when you kill the woman he loves, you have a big conflict. Exactly. And oh. before that, I mean, everyone kind of knows Superman, though, stereotypically, yeah. as like the the goody the goody goody of the hero world yeah kind of and we're quite rightfully so and he's so powerful though that it kind of for me that's what i found very hard about superman to get interested in that he was so powerful and so self-righteous that it was a bit kind of boring because you knew every outcome which is why i loved it and i really really loved it and respected them for doing it in man of steel when they made him kill the villain, whose name has just completely slipped out of my head. <laughs> uh, Zod. Zod. And um, uh, when they made him kill him in front of that family, and they yeah. didn't give him a cheap way out. And the way it was acting, everything was just incredible. Like, you can see afterwards, after he's actually had to kill a villain who is trying to destroy the world, he's, it still breaks him to do it. And yeah. I really liked that. I thought that was an incredible piece of cinema there that was like so and it, it kind of showed superman in a different light to me and like i really liked and i wanted to see more of that in batman v superman and sadly we didn't backlash didn't they? they're like oh how could you do that how could superman kill someone or something but i, I thought, see i i think it makes sense i liked it and he um, yeah it was the fact that what i liked was it was you know it was zod or the family that was it it wasn't like you know he's going to blow up the entire city if you don't do it. It was purely he was going to kill these... Was it like a mother and a son or something? I think it was a whole family. Um, I think it was a couple of them, weren't there? Uh, it was like a fat, small but, um, family. Yeah, it was a fact it was just them. So it was like, you know, it's not like make or break for the entire world. It was more intimate than that sort of thing. Um, yes, it kind of it narrowed down the scale a bit. Yeah, almost, Instead of having the big, it, more, the larger scale battle yeah, that was going on around them. As I say, you can't relate to that. You can't think, oh, it's you know, the, it's the whole world. You must save the universe or whatever. It's just literally these people in front of you are about to die. Do something about it. Sort I, of thing. I, the thing I loved is similar to narrowing down the scale and also not giving him a way out. There was no third option. It was either yeah. Zod or the family. He had to make that choice. And that was for him as a character, that was a heartbreaking choice because it was also the last of his race along with him and or a family, an innocent family who had done nothing to deserve this about to just be brutally murdered. Yeah. And they didn't give him, like in a lot of films, they always give them a way, there's always a way out. There's always a cheesy, cheap way. Yeah. yeah. And it's sometimes you kind of like, you know, when you know it's coming, you're like, oh, Batman God, turns on. up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's been there the whole time. Yeah. Just watching. Well, no, he was there, wasn't he? He was outside. Yeah, I mean, but no. that I I just think that that was a really good thing, and it it kind of it changed Superman's perspective for me, and I really did, and it, that to me made Superman a more likable character and a character I'd show more interest in. And that's well, what I say, it's just human. a shame. Yes, that's what it's about it. You see a human side to him rather than this supernatural. He's an alien. He's an alien. But um, I just got a thing in my head going, "Yeah, I'm an alien." Um, <laughs> Yeah, you, just, you see, as I say, he's just more re- relatable because he's a human being with, you know, a struggle inside, basically. Yes, and I think that struggle is a bit more powerful than, you know, where we were saying there's obviously the struggles of him, like we, we know there are issues of comics and there are video games and stories where Superman does go dark and he does go evil. Yeah. But there's there's always a reason. But like, well, I mean, there's always, there always should be a reason. It'd be a bit bad if he just went, yeah. oh, I'm evil. Oh, I'm evil today. Um, but you know what I mean? Isn't it? It's never permanent, and you know it's, there's kind of, um, there's always kind of like a slight cop-out. It was like, um, they. It's sometimes you know they're not going to fully go through with it. Yeah. It kind of, there'll always be a way back for him, a redemption. It's, it's like, well, what was, what happened and, with this 
Captain America Hydra thing? Did they go back on that? That's very confused. That got quite confusing because I see I don't read the latest comics, but I always kind of check up on the summaries at the moment, and because mm. of where's a good kind of jumping in point to get back into it. And there was a bit where it sounded like he was being it was an alternate reality kind of thing from this little girl being controlled by the Red Skull, and he was using her abilities to kind of change Cap's memory into thinking he was Hydra or something. Right. So it, that's what I read. I could that could mm. be wrong. This is the thing. I don't know enough about that one to go into more detail yeah. on that really um but that again you kind of feel like there might be they might kind of be like oh no let's let's backtrack and make him good again because yeah, we can't do that because that would be interesting and uh but i even Oops. loved like chris evans putting like say it ain't so yeah. when it came out on twitter that was brilliant and yeah. but see me again speaking of which captain america is one of my favorite heroes one of my favorite marvel heroes especially since he's been in the mcu He's, I, I feel Chris Evans has done a fantastic job. Every film has done a great job of really bringing Cap alive on the big screen. But one, one of the things I love the most about Cap is the whole way through, again, he's not to the extent of Superman, but he does kind of feel slightly self-righteous. And he's always like, you know, he's always going to make the right decision. He's always yeah. going to do the, go for the greater good. Apart from with Bucky, where he doesn't, he kind of breaks his moral code. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That com- And that conflict really... I loved that because mm. it made me in Civil War the whole way through. I was Team Cap, Team Cap, and then watching that end scene where um, mm. Iron Man sees the videotape of did Bucky you, killing yeah. his parents and Steve admitting he did know, and then you're like, "Oh, sure, oh, <laughs> who?" Because he was he was a really it, Tony was his you know really not best friend but really good close friend. And well, the they saved the, the world together twice. Him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, you know, that's not that's a big that's deal. Not the greater good. Well, he could see it. As, I like you could see it kind of as a greater good. Like maybe he's better off not knowing. Yeah. Because, but then again, there's also a selfish reason behind that. Protecting is, Bucky. Yeah, so it's protecting his friend. Yeah. It's not protecting Tony. Mm. In a way, it might. If Tony knows the full truth, it might help him process it and move on without wanting to blow Bucky's brains <laughs> out. Um, but those kind of conflicts, I think, are fantastic. I think that's the reason why Spider Man will always be one of the biggest heroes. I changed subject quite rapidly there, mm-hmm. but it's because I was just, I just had it in my head that he is so relatable to a young audience because of the idea of being a superhero, but at the same time, he's trying to live a normal life. So you see Peter Parker trying to make it to school on time, trying to get his homework done mm-hmm. on time, trying to fit the social life in. Getting to his uni speech in, doing, um, the film. in, that, in the film. But in the <laughs> comics, he's only at high school. So like, well, obviously he grows up, but yeah. in, the, in the early comics... <clears throat> um, he's still at high school and that makes him so relatable and also I think being the not being the cool popular kid kind of just yeah. being this geeky kind of nerdy person and a lot of people can connect and relate to that and I think it's a it's amazing that we've got a character no pun intended uh, that we've got a character Terrible like person. that and like Spider-Man to me Spider-Man will always be one of the greatest heroes because of reasons like that and that's what I'm really looking forward to with Homecoming yeah. is seeing him struggling with this school life at the same time as trying to fit in trying to become an avenger at the same time as try, probably looking for jobs and like thinking about uni and things like getting that getting a job well does the avengers pay well no <laughs> well there's only three right now two and a half kind of because one can't really fight True. so it's yeah i i'm really looking forward to that but obviously superheroes aren't the only heroes obviously you've no, got other films cool. and tv shows and old tales Star Wars. and because if you think about it like Thinking of like Aragorn, for example, we never see Aragorn have huge conflict within himself and all the rest. Well, his only conflict is um, <laughs> Arwen or Eowyn, really, isn't it? Well, it's not really. He's always with Arwen. <laughs> I'm just like... thinking about it. What is his problem? He kind of, he, he sort of thought about it, didn't he? And he's like, no. I'm, I don't think I've he did. I girl, think she was, I think she, he knew she liked him and it was more, he didn't know how to kind of, he's kind yeah. of playing dumb, I think, just to hope it wouldn't get to a big serious, mm. I love you moment. He's like, ooh. <laughs> oh, this is uh, <clears throat> this is awkward. But what again? But Ar- everyone loves Aragorn. Like if you watch Lord of the Rings, you can't help but love oh, Aragorn. And the only time you see him really kind of split on something where he seems to be in a bit of inner turmoil is when um, Frodo's trying to leave without him, and yeah. he kind of realizes then after Boromir's been corrupt that he's going to have to let him go. Well, it's interesting because you because it's a thing if he knows it will corrupt him. He he he's, he understands he is a weak man. Because men are weak in that universe, really. But when it comes not, to the ring. He's not a man. Um, he's, um, a well, he's a half dude, aren't he? Um, but you know, I mean, he, he, I think from that he feels that you know, he knows it can have an effect, so he will let it go. And he, that's him showing, uh, like you're saying, he's not necessarily for man. Maybe that's his half saying, I am strong enough to let this go. Sort yeah. of thing. 
Because that was always the worry, because his father, um, his uh, Isildur's heir, obviously Isildur's yeah. father, sorry, um, um, yeah, Isildur, his ancestor, was corrupted by the ring, which mm. has also got to be another thing that must scare him horrendously. And like because that's why he was scared to become king, I guess, because the power yeah. corrupts. Well, that's absolute his, power corrupts that's absolutely. That's big um, conflict, isn't it? Because he doesn't want to be king, he wants to escape it. Yes, and in a way, you could argue him becoming king was for the greater good. Well, it was in um, the end, wasn't it? Well, yes, because they... He still didn't want to do it, I don't think. He was like, okay, fine. Well, he accepted his fate, yeah. I think he realised once... Would you run me down, I'll do it. <laughs> everything was going so badly, yeah. And yeah. Um, But that's that's interesting, actually, because that's a hero who everyone loves, but isn't entirely relatable. It's like Legolas. No, you can't no. really relate to Legolas, but everyone thinks he's really cool. It, like, the way he, obviously, he does all of his stunts and everything, and the way he fights, those kind of heroes. But it's interesting, because obviously Superman... the majority of his, hero, his heroes, his fans are girls. Philando Bloom. Yeah, <laughs> but realistically, if you look at like we were saying, going back to Superman, even though he's got all these really cool powers, I, like it still doesn't excite me hearing, "Oh, Superman's on TV." I'm not like, "Oh, yeah. yay!" But if I heard Lord of the Rings on TV, I'd be like, "All oh, right, I know what I'm doing for the next few hours," and I'd happily watch those heroes go on their quest over and over again, even though they're not entirely relatable because obviously it's from a huge mythological point of view, a yeah, fantasy, yeah. not mythological, um, and. Yeah, Superman. Just, I don't know. It's just I think it's too. He's too much of a hero. I think it, to be it's, it's interesting, predictable as well. It's like you know what's going to happen. He's like, yeah, okay, he's going to turn up. He's going to save the day, be the hero. Everyone's going to love him. He's going to do all the good stuff, and he's going to go home. Do you find heroes who started off evil and became good more interesting? Yes. Kind of like Vegeta and Dragon much Ball Z. Yeah, because and... Vegeta's not good still. That's the thing. He's still, he's still a bit of a dick, but like in a good way, sort of thing. Because. Again, we talked about it plenty of times. Antiheroes, that's what they are. Because they, they're they not, you know, the goody two-shoes will always do the good thing. They're like, you know, will they, won't they almost. Yeah. Well, the thing with Vegeta, my, my greatest problem with Dragon Ball, um, I love Dragon Ball, so I, I don't like criticising it, but is the fact that they seem to take, obviously because they got the Dragon Balls, they take death very lightly. Death doesn't yeah. really have any hold on you in that universe. But at the same time, Vegeta mass murders some people in the when he went margin Vegeta and they revived him back and Goku's like boy am I obviously he needed him but he's like boy am I glad to see you and they're, they're buddy buddy and it never really comes up again it's like address the fact that okay. he did that yes exactly I think Vegeta would be like nice got some of my uh, my pent up rage out but I know that in but then at the same time uh, if you're this is spoilers for Dragon Ball Super because this is very recent in Dragon Ball Super, do you care about? Yeah, that's this one? So um, there was a um, there was an old, there was a tournament a while ago in Dragon Ball Super, and um, the King of the Universe appeared of all the universes appeared and was like, "I love this tournament. It's really cool. I want to host a tournament with all the universes." And it's pretty much implied that one, the universe, the only universe that will remain afterwards, is the one that's um, the winner. He's gonna kill or, the rest, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. And this never happened. And Goku was like, "I wondering what's that once. Uh, I wonder what's happening about that tournament." And he went and reminded the King of the Universe, and he's like, "Oh yeah." And, oh, I should do that. And he actually, because he wanted to compete. But isn't that Goku anyway, though? He's a bit of a, a an idiot almost. <laughs> yes, but the point is... A bit like, dopey. Yeah, but he's always, at the end of the day, like, against in the freezer arc, he's always been, and even against Cell and stuff, he's always done the greater good. Yeah. Apart from when he threw his Enzo bean to heal him against his son, and everyone's like, what? And he's like, oh, it wouldn't be a fair fight. It's like, yeah. who cares about fair? <laughs> he's going to destroy the world. It's a greater good for himself? But well, that, that's meant to be like they're saying pride kicking. Oh, in, yeah, yeah, he has pride. to win fairly. He has to win legitly. But and then, uh, Vegeta letting cell power up. Those kind of like. Oops. I remember when I was a kid. Um, I used to watch. Did you ever watch Beast Wars Transformers? I think I had the toy of it, so I might have watched something. And there was a I Velociraptor who started on the Decepticons, but then um, went over to Optimus Prime's side, mm. the Autobots. And I, he was my favourite. He, he was kind of like Vegeta. When I was younger, I remember Gohan and Vegeta being my favourites in Dragon Ball Z. And um, for, I remember I distinctly liking the fact that even though they were evil, they became good. Yeah. And they still, even if they didn't act like they cared, like they still cared. Deep you down, know like, they do, yeah. Yeah, there's like, um, again, Cell, going back to Dragon Ball Z, when he, um, when he comes back from the dead after they think he's killed himself with Goku. And then he shoots Trunks through the heart. And Vegeta just, after all this time, kind <laughs> of abusing and saying he doesn't love him just flips out and goes mental and just charges self gun ho which actually makes the situation worse for everybody but it shows that he really which cares he cares and he really did him, love yeah. trunks and as much as he calls him what's he call him fruit yeah <laughs> whatever it is you look like a walking fruit no, it's TFS but still yeah but those kind of um, same I th- person I think those heroes are, they're always more interesting because everyone like you said they're unpredictable mm. 
Whereas with mm. characters like going back to Superman again, you know exactly what he's going to do. Well, it's weird because you always think, you know, what are, what are their reasons for being, uh, I guess, good's a strong word, but good. Because like, you know, Superman's like, he feels like he must, you know, defend the world sort of thing, the, the world, the earth. And then you say like people like Vegeta. It's like, well, why are they fighting for the good side? Why are they doing this? Yeah, well, it's not just they feel like I must defend because that's who I am, sort of thing. It's like because mm, with Vegeta, I think strong reason. With Vegeta, it was all back on the Na- in the Namek saga when he had to team up, like literally had to team up with Gohan and Krillin, yeah. or he was gonna die. And he it ended up just becoming a gradual thing. He ended up just kind of being forced to start with the group, then kind of ended up just sticking with them, mm. and then eventually his arc became kind of, he just merged fully with their group, it's like his story. And he did, it was never that he was good. Well, he was, wanted immortality, wasn't it? That's why he turned he up. Ga- well, he gave up on that pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that, that was why he was, I mean, cause he's not evil, evil. He wasn't like, you know, I want to destroy everything. He was kind of like, I mean, yeah, that's why he went there. And then he obviously got pissed off cause he lost. So then he wanted to destroy everything. Um, but yeah, he's not like <sighs> malice sort of like, you know, Wants to destroy because he can, I guess. Um, I don't know how to describe it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's not like, he's not freezer. He's, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But going to one of our favorite TV shows now, just changing up a bit, uh, The Walking Dead. How do you feel? Are there any it's... heroes in The Walking Dead? Well, this, exactly. Like, Rick is your, the Rick's guy <laughs> you root for. But he has done some questionable things. He's not a things. hero. He's not really a hero. He cares about his family and he's relatable he for that reason. Because I don't think you genuinely, I don't think in that world, you could really be a hero. You die too early on, I think. You're a hero for it. your own people. Yeah. But that's it. But you couldn't be a hero for everyone. Like, we see people making nice decisions, but at the same time, if we're going back into it now, so this is spoiler warnings for season seven. Uh, if you look at Rick, like, attacking the saviors, he'd only heard things about the saviors. That's a, that's a not much to go off. To we're go talking mer- the outpost. Yeah, yeah, the outpost in season six. That's not much to go off of. If you're going to go and... Um, if, if, if you're going to go and start a war with someone... And you've only heard the stories they're bad guys. You have no proof of it. Because mm. he didn't see it at the... I mean, he guessed he did when they attacked Gregory. He got their own people to attack Gregory. He guessed... He kind of put two and two together. Yeah. But I'm still assuming that could have just been made up by those people as like a way of betraying Gregory, like doing a bit of a coup. And you do really support Rick. Like, you love these characters. But they have... Again, they've done questionable things. They paid the price for it quite mm-hmm. brutally. This season, they really paid the price for it. Now they're kind of getting back on track to right. We're going back to war and we're going to win. But the, I, I don't consider say I wouldn't say Rick's a hero. But like you said, he's a hero he's to his a, own people. He's a strong leader. That's what he's, he's a, a yeah, good, he's strong a powerful leader. leader, and he's a smart leader. Mm. And he does he has he doesn't rule in a dictatorship. So I know he has said before this isn't a democracy yeah. anymore. This is the dictatorship. But he's not really a dictator the way he leads, mm. and he's he's firm and assertive. But he's not a dictator, whereas Negan is a dictator. That, that's yeah. what Negan is. Which is you you disobey me, I burn your face. <laughs> what is oh I really, do you mind if I go into some comic book spoilers? And uh, everyone comic else. Books is fine for me. So okay, this will spoil the TV series usually, uh, for people. But Negan actually seems to be becoming a good guy in the moment in the comics. He's fighting alongside yeah, Rick and he keeps fighting for Rick and he's even done things and been like, This is for Rick kind of a thing. Yeah. And uh, well, it's, it's he's kind of turning of that in the series. Well, he, he's, he's taking a liking to him, isn't he? Yeah, he does things for him, kind of he in a sick made way. Him spaghetti. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, like what would he do? I mean, he takes out the the walker the way he worded it to him. Like, you know, I just did that for you, sort of thing. Like I'm helping you. I know he's not, you know, being nice about it but it's like you know it's kind of an underlying sort of see i think that's more psychological to put people in their place be like look we are being good to you Mm. like us like you have we are doing you a good thing here this is good for you it's kind of keeping people subdued i don't think he is purposely as i said going back to the same thing like freezer he's not being evil he's just trying to make control i think yeah well he wants he wants you know uh, what you call it a um civilization doesn't he and this is the way he sees to make that happen so he's trying to do a good thing, just a very dodgy way of going around it. <laughs> Would you consider Daryl a hero? Because he started um, off quite, obviously there's reasons for it, but years of abuse and everything leading yeah. up to uh, where he starts in the show. And after he kind of detaches himself from Merle, 
I would say he becomes a hero for the group. He, as, as, as I say, I don't say he's a hero. He's, as you say, he's a hero for the group. Actually, no. That's, Same no, as Rick, I think. Actually, I disagree. Daryl, I think, is a hero who's well, had his trust yeah, broken because there's bits his in people. season six with Dwight and yeah, Dwight's he his wife. Yeah. He tried to help them and then it backfired on him hugely and now he's like, right, okay, I'm, I'm not trusting people that, again. Yeah. But that was quite a heroic thing to do. He didn't know those people. He didn't owe them anything. Mm-hmm. And it was the same at the end of season five with Aaron when Daryl. I'll tell you who, asked, who I think is a hero is Aaron. Aaron is. Yeah. Yeah, he Aaron's will a hero. Go up to, you know, people, find them, talk to them. For the greater good. For and everyone, yeah. Yeah, it's not just for him. Like, he brought Rick's group in. He did say there's a reason because we want fight. We need people who can fight here. Mm. But at the same time, he was doing it because he cared as well. You could tell. And, like, even now, like, he backs Rick 100%. Yeah. Even, like, even when he was going to get beaten up by the saviors, he's like, guys. Rick goes to Stephanie's like, Rick, just, I'll take it. Well, I, I get what's coming. couldn't like, step in, could he? <laughs> no, well, it would, Rick yeah. would have, though, I think. I think Rick, if he, if Aaron hadn't said no, Rick would have stepped in. Mm-hmm. And then everything would have escalated even more on that side. There would have been two big incidents going off in um, Alexandria. Could he have brought a bloody note back? Yeah. No, yeah, I don't know why they brought that note back. But yeah, no, I agree. Actually, Aaron, I think, is probably one of the most genuine good people left yeah. in the show. I think Maggie's always kept a sense of goodness around her. And she's yeah. quite heroic. Like when she was, yeah. when, um, it, when uh, Trevor, he's not Trevor, um, Simon, but he's called Trev- Trevor from GTA. Oh, Trevor, yeah, right. Um, when he, his group lead all the walkers into Hilltop and Maggie, even though she's quite heavily pregnant, goes out and still mm. fights and, and saves them all. I mean, does she know the people at that time? As far as she's aware, they're she, just Gregory's people. Yeah, she, she knows Gregory. them a bit. She knows Jesus, obviously, is a good guy. And Jesus yeah, has Jesus. told her the others are good guys. Did they say his actual name? Was it Paul or something? Yes. It yeah, was yeah. Paul, yeah. Was, yeah, um, thought I... Picked it up. Well, he says Jesus is a nickname. Did he? Yeah, oh, he, said, he says to De- when he first meets Rick and Dad, he's like, oh, well, my friends call me Jesus. Ah. Um, which is really funny when you've got someone like King Ezekiel from like a fantasy yeah. land and then you have Jesus and he's like, oh, Jesus, welcome to the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really good. That's but cool. they've added a bit more humour actually uh, coming into it. Well, his, uh, his, um, his court of men were well, like, aha! Oh, no, no, that bit's quite funny, isn't it? Where he's like, the king is excited to see you. Uh, <laughs> shut up now, Jeffrey. Okay. <laughs> and the bit where like Rick's group is staying really far back yeah. and Jesus is like, oh, I forgot to mention that he's got a uh, tiger, yeah? And then they're like, <laughs> they're trying to add a bit more like humour to it, I think, which is um, good. But going back on topic now to, uh, to hero. The tiger's the real hero. Yes, of the story. He's going to save the day. He's going to kick some ass. What do you, so who would you say is your favourite hero or like most, a fictional hero, who is your most inspirational hero? The most and inspirational why? hero. What's a hard one? Because I am more, yeah, a villains guy. So that's a bit of a worry thing for me. I, I take inspiration I from villains. Them. They're so much more interesting to me. My best favorite hero is Batman. But why? Because I like the fact he's a bit whiny sometimes, and he's become a bit of like, oh, my parents sort of thing. But I just, it's the way he is. He, he's, it's the, really, it's the new Batman. It's the Ben Affleck one. The way of just how brutal he is. It's like, you, you see, because, uh, well, how I imagine it, I've grown up with Batman, so I imagine it all with one timeline. So, you know, I knew Batman, how he was when I was growing up. Now I've got this older Batman that seems like the same one, just more broken. So yeah. he's more like, he just doesn't care anymore. Like, I learned about the Jason Todd stuff, so I can see why. Um, I sort of yeah, just growing up with him really. So I sort of as I've got older, he sort of moved on almost. That um, event, does that make sense? Yeah, I can see that. What so do sort you... of, yeah. Just I just learned to relate to him. Basically, I, I, I like how he is. I, under, I sort of think about that and think, okay, that actually makes sense. Sort of thing. I can see where you're coming from. How do you feel about the idea of obviously a lot of writers um, have different ways of portraying it, but heroes killing. I like it. See, because this is the interesting point, because I get... Not when, in excess. No, but I get when writers make the choice not to, because it shows that even if you're in a position where you technically would be killing someone to save your life, if you can avoid it, you should, because no one has the right to decide who lives and who dies. So I completely get that side of it. But sometimes... It's like, it's like the Superman thing. Yeah. When they have to, you really you just need to do this. That because I, good. I think it's more powerful when they don't do it very... I think in stories, it's really powerful when a hero doesn't kill people often. Like, because when we saw Batman in Batman v Superman gunning down those criminals, it was yeah. it was shock. It was, oh, God, he's actually doing it. Wow. Um, and like the crate to the head. I remember seeing that. I was like, oh, my God. 
but it, I think if they don't do it that often, and then when you do see it, it hits you. It's got such an impact to it to see a hero who you kind of believe to be pure good and not do that kind of like it doesn't matter what situation you're in, they always find a way just to knock the bad guy out or yeah. get detain them somehow. Never kill anyone. And then to see them actually kill someone, it's quite quite scary actually. It kind mm. of it puts them in a different light. And Cause like yeah, like Deadpool and stuff, it's just like like you say, you, you just expect it from them. Yeah, there's no there's no kind of weight to it. When they Deadpool leave them alive, it. you're like, why did they leave them alive? It's like, yeah, what? it's kind of like you got role reverse <laughs> yeah. with Deadpool, yeah. And he's kind of a he's like an entertaining hero, isn't he? Yeah. He's got well, that's his what he's own there for, isn't he? Yeah, he's very just comedic type of hero. Mm. Do you like the idea of um, Spider Man going back to that? How he's kind of like the teenage hero who's trying to live a normal everyday life whilst um, yeah, because being a superhero. An interesting point about because yeah, he is a normal kid while trying to because he was it you know great responsibility comes great power comes great responsibility so he feels entitled to do this like he should do this because he's been given this gift and but this also gift. i think the guilt of Bitten uncle ben <laughs> the guilt um, of uncle ben i think drives that point as well yes. uncle ben's the one who always told him a great yeah. power comes great responsibility and that's the tipping that's point what, wasn't it really one thing that's always kind of going to be driving him as well, and I think that also it's a it's a good kind of thing for kids to learn to not take loved ones for granted. I think so. It's a good yeah. Less there's a good message, strong. And message if you there. can, that's the idea, isn't it? If you can help, then you should. Exactly. Yeah. If you're in a situation where you are able to make a difference, you should. If the difference is sort of good, obviously not. The, yeah. <laughs> I can make the situation ten times worse. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think yeah, it's like um, if I go to my favorite manga is Naruto. And anime, I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. And the thing I love about Naruto is you see his story from when he, from a young age, and you learn more about his childhood as the series progresses. And the way that he has had a really rough time, hard time of it. Like his parents died the day he was born, and he got a demon trapped in him the day <laughs> he was born. And everyone in the town he grew up in hates him, and he doesn't know why. Mm. And they all like they really, really hate him. So he's had no one his entire life and he's still good and he still, at the end of the day, wants what's best for everybody else. He wants them to acknowledge him, that he's he is a good person, that he does that he deserves to be acknowledged. But at the same time, he will do whatever it takes to protect everybody still, despite the fact he should realistically hate these people because they hated him for, as far as he's concerned, no reason. Yeah. And he's just been literally abused. There's a bit where like he goes to a shop and he sees a mask and he's like, oh, that looks cool. And then the guy picks the mask up and goes, I'll take it, you freak. He just throws it at his head. <laughs> and it's stuff like that. And you're like, if you grew up in that situation, would you really be good? Do you think? Yeah. I think you'd like really hate everybody. It's well, a you'd hard... eventually learn to like hate them and then you'd want to, well, probably kill them or something. And then you've got Sasuke, who's kind them. of the other side of that coin. He lost his family when he was older than Naruto, quite brutally. And then made that his goal. It cons- the anger and the hatred consumed him. Mm. And there are times where they talk about it. Like, I wonder how different things would be if he we were, on, um, if we kind of lived our lives in reverse. Kind of if we flipped lives. Mm. Who? How would it change? Would Sasuke be able to bring Naruto back? And because Sasuke, at the end of the day, is a good guy, but went off the rails massively. So he is a hero. He just kind of derailed into the dark side <laughs> a bit. Where, obviously, but then you learn the reasons why, and it's a very powerful story. And in a way, I, I like that more because now when it's on the Boruto series and Sasuke's back on the good side, you know you know why he went evil as well. So it's understandable. And they do, unlike Vegeta with Dragon Ball Z, where after the whole margin thing, he just went back to normal, no punishment, no 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 one trying to give him, no one even gave him a talking to. Like with Nara, they don't do it, they don't go into huge depth over it, but when they get back to the Hidden Leaf village, Kakashi's like, you're bloody lucky not to be in prison. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for the fact that I am as leader of the village saying no, I, like that you're, you, it was your uh, uh, basic, uh, tongue tying myself. Uh, if it wasn't for me telling everyone else that no, you've changed, Naruto sticking up for you, being the great hero of the war, so he has a lot of saying power, people power, mm. and the fact that you did actually help end the war, you would be in jail right now. And they're like, they're, only, they're the only three things keeping you out of prison, so don't do anything to cock it up, basically. And he's like, no, I'm changed. I, I won't. That, I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. I don't do and it anymore. It, it's really relatable. It's like how we were kind of talking about uh, in the Villains podcast. We talked about um, the fact that Darth Vader, after seeing Revenge of the Sith, kind of lost any chance of redemption in my eyes. Because as soon as he murdered those children, there wasn't in my head, there wasn't a valid enough reason yeah. to do that. Mm. Whereas going back to Sasuke, for example, the only people he killed 
when he was evil. He did kill a leader of the Leaf Village, but he was a very shady, dodgy person, and he had ordered Sasuke's family to be murdered, so there was motive behind it, so it made sense. And it is... You can kind of forgive that, that idea of revenge with him, because... You know why he did it. There's like, a valid reason. Going back to Anakin, the Tusken Raiders. You know, we, we slaughtered them all. You know why? Because you know they killed his mother, effectively. So he had a reason to do what he was doing. Um, obviously, like, completely fueled by rage. But it's not like, you're now my apprentice. Go kill those kids. Exactly. That's what I say. Kundlings. That's the thing. The Jedi hadn't actually um, done anything bad to Anakin at that point. He'd seen Mace Windu trying to kill a Sith Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and it stuck up for the Sith Lord. And, and then when can teach murdered. me magic tricks. But... Potentially. It's... Uh, yeah, it's to me, like, that kind of hero. Uh, like, even though he threw Palpatine off off that... Uh, uh, down into mm-hmm. the um, uh, power part of the... I can't remember the technical name for it. Of the Death Star. The power reactor? Oh, I think it was down to the reactor, actually. Reactor think? core. And he threw him down there. And I'm like, okay, that's good. If I'd only seen the original trilogy, I could be like, oh, I forgive you. Like, that, that's really good. Oh, you good. don't know what he's done, yeah. You're, you are a hero. You see him choke a dude, and that's about it. And then you go back to um, the prequel trilogy, and you're like, <clears throat> I can't forgive you. Actually, you're just evil. Like, you're it doesn't matter how... Dick. There's no... There was no need to go murder the children. Like, he could have even... It's the fact that it was so soon. It was done so quickly. Mm. Like, if it had happened after Padme's death, it's not understandable still, but you kind of guess, you can see where he would be he's at. He's just given up. It's like nothing left in him. But th- with this one, he was like, it literally, she hadn't even died yet. And then Palpatine's like, go and kill those kids for me. Okay. <laughs> he I doesn't even let the clones just, do it. He yeah. goes in, he's like, I'll do it. I think it was just shock value because I don't really remember how I felt when I first saw that. But I'm assuming I would have been like, oh shit, okay. I just remember what, uh, yeah. one of my teachers when it came out laughing about the fact they couldn't call children children. They kept calling yeah. them younglings and they were literally like, they... Murdered younglings, and then apparently my teacher was like, "I lost it there. I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't keep focused anymore." But anyway, going along the lines of Star Wars, um, an interesting guy is Luke in like Return of the Jedi. When he comes back, I mean, because you know he's he's the goody two show, two shoes, goody two shoes of um, A New Hope, and you know, Empire Strikes Back. And then when he comes back, he's you know this mysterious you know hooded figure with this sort of green lightsaber. At the time, we didn't know what green meant; we just knew the blue. So um, it's sort of like this mysterious guy of like, is he still good? Is he walking the line of sort of grey Jedi sort of thing? Which I think he kind of did because he uses the sort of the fighting style, doesn't he? He uses the, the sort of passionate, ragey fight well, rather than being a pure Jedi. In the old expanded universe, um, before it was discontinued, Luke, I think, did kind of cro- walk that fine line. And he, ended, mm. he did fall in love, which is obviously against the Jedi code. He got yeah, married. He got married, had kids, um, all of it. But he didn't turn but, evil. No, because you don't. I. It's not. I don't. I, I know it's. Yeah, it's not guaranteed it's, it's you would stu- turn it's evil. It's a stupid thing. It's saying. the theory of if you yeah. love someone, you can lose someone, which yeah, can yeah, lead yeah. to anger and hatred. Like Anakin and Padme, I think, is the overall message of that. Um. But yeah, no, it is interesting with Luke when he kind of he may he came back and like you said, you're like, oh, is he like darker now? I don't. Mm. I don't know what's going on with him. And that was very interesting. He's threatened and, Jabba, doesn't he? As well, he's like, I'm basically don't set them free. I will mess you up. Yeah, I can't remember the wording, but. Well, this is why you should like, watch... Shit, he's threatening him, and that's a Jedi. This is why you should watch Rebels, because there's bits of that in there. Spoil- slight spoilers, I won't go into details. But Ezra, because he obviously, he's kind of like Anakin. He came to Jedi training late. Yeah. And Kanan is still a Padawan, kind of. He he obviously he never finished his training. So he's trying to teach Ezra, but Ezra obviously doesn't get it because he's had a whole life outside of this already. And literally, he'll use the Force and be really hostile towards people with it. And mm. Kane's like, what are you doing? That's like the way to the Dark Side. It's like, no, it's the way to get information. Which is that's true. Kind of. And... Or maybe that's the thing. Kane's just old-fashioned. Well, so he's thinking, oh, that is the way to the Dark Side. But he goes, if he thought about it, maybe think, actually, if we use this and we control it, then it could be helpful. See, I think Grey Jedi could be a really... I they could be great, good heroes. A great idea. It's a great concept. Mm. And in future films, they could focus on um, something to do with Grey Jedi because that would be fascinating. Maybe to that's see. what Luke is now. Like, well, to be fair, you could argue Luke going into hiding isn't exactly. But then again, Obi Wan and Yoda did it, so you can't say it's not very a Jedi thing to do yeah. <laughs> because two of the greatest masters of all time did it. So uh, it's not. But well, well d- did Luke have to? I can't remember in the end. He didn't, actually, he didn't have to. He just felt sad, didn't he? Because obviously well, his apprentice... Maybe he couldn't bring himself to kill like Kylo Ren because he uh, realistically, he should be able to overpower Kylo Ren at that stage. Yeah, Kylo yeah. Ren would have been young when he went dark side mm. because it sounded like at the beginning of The Force Awakens it wasn't a new thing, him being evil. No. Do you think he'll redeem himself and become a hero again? Um, 
I like him too, but I don't know if it's a bit too like, okay, same formula, there we go again. Yeah, I um, really hope it's not the same uh, kind of, a, they don't kind yeah. of repeat all of it. And they're like, oh, actually, joke's on you, he, he's good a lot. Not ready to go evil. I think... Well, not it, evil, but like, I would say grey, just to walk the line where it's like, you know, she I, just thinks you're like, okay, that's a bit questionable, but not being, you know, I think full we, dark side. Ray could potentially, because she's got a bit of a temper, so it could mm. get the better of her. And uh, go. I'll be. I. I want to see more Jedi, but not huge amounts. But like, it'd be quite cool if it wasn't just Luke on that island. And I don't. Um, not oh, all these Jedi come swarming out from under the rocks. Like, oh. Or maybe even people like um, in Rogue One. I can't remember his name now, but the Force sensitive guy. Uh, He's always like, I'm oh, the, the Force, Asian the Force is with me. Yeah. Yes. Um, was he sent Force sensitive? I thought he was just like a, a worshiper. I think or he like was. A believer. I think he was Force sensitive because when he walked out and he didn't get shot, it was kind of almost like the Force guiding him to to the switch. And because uh, mm. all those bullets were there, and there's realistic, no just way. based off his faith almost. I think it's meant to, I think it implies he's force sensitive, just not a Jedi. To me, that's how I took it anyway. Because as a, a blind person who's able him. to do all that stuff, I thought he said, like, you know, the Guardians, they're not, well, he says they're not Jedi, but I don't know if he says, I can't remember. Nah, carry on. I think it makes sense if they are force sensitive. And because, like, the way he does stuff, it w- I don't think it would be possible unless he w- did have some slight connection to yeah, the force. not force sensitive. No, but Daredevil also got radioactive stuff in his eyes that gave him superpowers there. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I think it would be interesting to have some people like that, some other heroes like that. I would love a Star Wars film. I mean, I know I've, I've always stood by this, that I don't think you need Jedi or Sith to make a great Star Wars film, and Rogue One proved that, hands down. And I think but what would be cool, if you are going to use Jedi and stuff, instead of being like, oh, there's conveniently one alive... Do some stories of some people maybe who are force sensitive but not Jedi or Sith who don't really know mm. about the force. Because uh, you do get that in some backstories as uh, creatures and uh, alien races who are sensitive to the force but don't believe in the Sith or the Jedi. They don't want to be involved in either. So they just do their own thing. And they're still very powerful with the force. They're just not officially a good or a bad guy. They're just kind of like, I do all I want. That's the thing because kind of they have records, don't they, of all the. Well, they did. Um, all the force sensitive children in the world or galaxy. Um, it's like, well, did they literally have all of them? Or did they miss some? Well, I d- would they get tested for it for the Metachlorian count? Darth I Maul. Think? I mean, was he in that list somewhere when he was little? There must be some planets that aren't registered, I, I would imagine. There will probably be somewhere. If, I, if anyone knows the answer, please leave a comment below and <laughs> can explain. You, even if you're not force sensitive, uh, force sensitive, can you learn something or some of it almost? Well, this is the theory about Snoke, isn't it? That he's not actually a Sith or Force-sensitive. Mm, he just knows That stuff. he just knows, like, he's learned from Palpatine or something, and he's using what he's learned to teach Kylo Ren, but obviously doesn't know how to do it himself. He just knows how to teach someone it. Mm. And that would be quite... That would be interesting. That would be different. If he's been... Which is why he's If he's rusty. been turned to the dark side by someone who's not actually Force-sensitive, that would be really interesting. Yeah. But he did say, it's time I train you properly. I'm coming to... I'm going to spend time with you, basically. We're going to have a proper bonding session. Spend time together now that you've just killed your father. Spoilers. Um, yeah. Do you think Ray will be a really good hero for the series? I hope so. She's is a good start so far. She's I think, not yeah. the damsely sort of thing. She's a strong female character, which is what is nice. Like her and, um, and Jin have been brilliant. Yes, yeah. Um, absolutely brilliant characters. I th- I yeah, I think she'll be fantastic. Mm. I think she's onto onto a good start, and I think as long as she keeps up her momentum, mm. she'll absolutely blitz the it, next two it's films. From the first sort of major scene with her and um, John Boyega when she he's like you know I don't hold my hand. I was like, that's cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So like you know, she can hold her own like right from the get go. Yeah, because like, you know, in a way off. that's yeah that's kind of saying to the audience, showing the audience she's not the damsel in distress because he's kind of treating her as one by yeah. grabbing her hand and trying to pull her along. She's like, no, I can do it it's myself. Like, I, don't I don't need you. I don't to need do you it. to do that. And you can sort of see, you know, she's grown up alone mostly, so she sort of learned to you know uh, to look after herself, which is what's cool about her. It makes her such yeah, a powerful character. Do you like it when they give heroes flaws, not just kind of? Not not like decisions like what you we were talking about. Birth, still, Mark. No, for example, no. like Iron Man being an alcoholic and yes. things like that. Do you like it when they get... Because it shows that they're not perfect. That even yeah. like the people you look up to most to have issues they have to go Again, through. Again, we're going back to Superman. And he hasn't really got a flaw. His flaw is he's allergic to the stuff that he you know, from his planet. And magic. Magic? Yeah, he's weak to magic. Is he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah... It's like, do you like... So you like it when they have the flaw? Because I do. I think yeah, it makes it, them more human. It humanizes human. them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It makes them like... You know, because, yeah, as you say, 
he's an alcoholic. It's like, well, there's, uh, you know, 100 million people like that. So he suddenly becomes this... I don't know if there's that many. Well, you know, there's... <laughs> um, but he suddenly becomes a normal human being and underneath the suit. He's like, that's just a guy. It just adds more layers to them. Yeah, yeah, it adds more layers to these characters, more depth to them, and that makes them more interesting. Mm, and again, rather it, than he is a god. And like. when I say more relatable, I don't mean you can relate in, I'm an alcoholic as well. Yeah. I mean as in <laughs> more relatable in terms of he's obviously had a hell of a stressful time trying to do what he's doing, and this is kind of taking its toll on him, and this is how he's handling it. Yeah. That's, that's why it's hard when you say, like, relate, because like I was saying relate to Batman. It's like, well, I can't really... You know, my parents went murdered in front of me. By no, it, it makes them more understandable. You yeah. understand their past, kind of in the. You under, you have a uh, like not you, you, can, for, you, you can, can understand see it. I don't know what the word is. It's not relate. It's not understands. Not it really either. But it's like when people say, "I understand." It's like, no, you don't. It's like, well, yeah. yeah. Um. I you can. You're a, or you're aware of it. Aware of it. I yeah. guess. Yeah. I think this would probably be a good time to end it. Thank you so much, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like or a subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. And if you have any topics you would like us to discuss, please, please leave them in the comment section below. Below. And uh, until then, we will see you next time where we should have a Rick with us. A wild Rick appeared. He did. Diddle, 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 diddle